Viran, thank you so much, guys. Welcome. Uh, as he pointed out, I am Dilip Govind Raju, uh, the founder and owner of Greenhouse Bangalore. So uh, the whole passion kind of uh, grew from childhood times that I spent with my mother, whether it be garden at home or in the farm. So like uh, being in Bangalore, we, we have a farm as well. So having access to that ground changed a lot of elements right from birth to on to my uh, professional uh, corporate life as well. So today we're talking about all about living with plants. You know, there's a lot of uh, issues, pros and cons about is it good? Is it bad? Is it uh, do we need to bring it in? Is it expensive? Is it cheap? How do we do it? So today's session, I'm hoping uh, I'm going to solve at least give you some solution and encourage you guys to bring in plants into your spaces. That's the whole idea with Greenhouse Bangalore as well. So just going to start with, you know, uh, people believe that you need to have large pots, large plants to kind of uh, bring into your spaces. So when uh, Viren was pointing out uh, how we work with artisans across Karnataka or India as well. So this is one of the examples. So uh, artisans are used to making decorative elements, uh, not necessarily practical, which adapts to today's uh, generation. So we went in, rather I started working, working with a lot of them and then explored into practicality of those elements, deco elements. So this elephant, which they've been carving for many generations became a planter for greenhouse. So this is one of the trademark products available across India uh, through many brands that we supply. Uh, but the whole idea was to add a small green element, a green plant into that, which can be kept on your desktop, coffee table, anywhere. So utilizing this uh, small spaces, including you don't need to have large planters to have plants in your space. So this, as you can see, fits in my palm. So it can be as small as this, or even as large or as many as you see around me. So uh, a lot of the questions that I get often is it requires a lot of maintenance. There's a lot of uh, um, myth about uh, having lots of plants indoor, right? So uh, as many of you may know or may not know, uh, plants give out oxygen in, while during photosynthesis, which is usually during the daylight. And during the night, when there's lack of natural light, they consume oxygen and then give out carbon dioxide. But it's not at a level where it's detrimental to human life. It's very small percentage. So it's not to be something that you guys need to be worried about bringing plants indoor. But yes, there are other cons uh, in terms of having plants indoor. So let's address those issues, uh, weigh out what's pros and cons of having plants indoor. So the cons is yes, it's it takes up a lot of space or maybe a little space, how much of a space. Uh, it, it can be dirty. It does have soil or growing medium, any medium that it's set, including water. I'm gonna talk about uh, the other technique of growing plants. So even if you have something like this, there are chances that if you have it on your desktop, it topples over and then, you know, just messes your whole desktop. So there are those chances, but is it worth taking the chance Absolutely, absolutely. I think I personally believe plants bring out a lot of good things in us. Uh, it, it's been proven, there's a lot of research which says it reduces stress. I, I, I wouldn't uh, vouch completely on it, but I have personally experienced it does make a, a mental switch when you're, when you're around plants, irrespective of what size or how many. So it does help. But then it also helps you focus. If you make that your hobby of having plants indoor, then you pick up the concept called gardening, right? You need to care for this. It's a living bee. You need to look after and make sure it sustains. So the whole idea of gardening actually helps you focus, let go of a lot of things that's happening in your daily life. So in a way, it helps you reduce stress, forget your problems, if you want to call that so. Uh, and focus on something that helps you uh, uh, learn something new, but also uh, learn about being patient. Nothing is fixed in a day overnight, right? Uh, there's also this fear that we need to get out of, which is about killing plants, right? So uh, before I continue on, Viran, I think we can post the first poll uh, just to kind of get people, uh, get an idea as to how many are bird plants and so on. But uh, the, the, the myth or rather the, the fear is, or rather I hear a lot of my clients or friends come to me and say, 
uh, I've killed a lot of plants. But trust me, we as a business which runs a gardening center, we kill a lot of plants as well. It's something that we need to understand that we are bringing in a living being into our spaces. So uh, there are many circumstances that we are not able to understand uh, immediately. Mm -hmm. It might be a bit late. It might be too late to rescue it, but we may understand why it didn't sustain. So because of that, there are many conditions which are played. So you need to understand that there's no, uh, you should not, it's like, you know, trusting and taking the jump, take a leap. That's what everybody says. When you're learning something new, take a leap, take a trust of faith. So that's exactly what I'm going to say about uh, plants as well, be it outdoor or indoor. Uh, given our current situation, the lockdown situation, a lot of us are locked up in our concrete boxes. Uh, and I feel it, it, it emphasizes a lot more for me and for my team as well to kind of spread the message around saying that, we need to bring these plants inside as and when possible and also make it in such a way that it's not a problem, it's not a hassle, it's not too much of work. So as I go forward, I'll, I'll explain the tips and tricks of how to maintain. Uh, but first of all, let's understand what indoor plants means, right? So there is a lot of uh, uh, top 10 in best indoor plants, top five and so on. But what is an indoor plant? If you look at evolution, there's no such thing as indoor plants. Plants have not evolved for indoor spaces. Indoor spaces is our homes that we have created, right? So indoor plants are basically tropical plants or uh, plants, even, even the non-tropical plants, which are able to sustain in shade. So uh, in ambient light, they thrive. So in direct sunlight, they might struggle. So these are the plants which have been categorized as indoor plants, potted and brought into our spaces. So how do we make sure that we provide the right conditions to these plants in order to sustain, to keep them healthy? So, but so far, any questions that we have from viewers or uh, the results of the poll as well, Viren? Not yet, we'll have to just start the poll sure, in. Give sure. us a minute, we'll start the poll. Dave, do you, would you be able to help us with the poll, please? Absolutely. So I'll, I'll, I'll continue with sure. just a minute. Uh, that yeah. We'll have to give the uh, audience about 30, 40 seconds for them to respond. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, as I'm just going to kind of, there you go. Uh, yeah, I have done it. Perfect. So the first question are indoor plants beneficial to us. Uh, all right, people, it's your turn to participate in the poll. Uh, Viral, let me know when do I close it. Yep, we'll, we'll just give it about 20 seconds. The responses are pouring in. Wow, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> we already have 90 plus uh, participants, so that'll be wonderful. Right, another five seconds, we can close it. Uh, panelists can't vote. Yeah, Marilyn, you can't vote, sorry. <laughs> you can put it in the chat, though. I closed it. Perfect. You could probably share the results, uh, Deb. Yes. So we have 56 yes, that makes 97% and two no, that makes wow. 3%. So wow, that's, that's, you have the answer there. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, that itself kind of uh, summarizes the whole reason of us doing this topic today. It does, has benefits which outweigh the, 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 the benefits which are not in favor of, rather they're not benefits, they're the, the cons of having plants indoor. So definitely it's, it outweighs and it's beneficial to have plants indoor. Uh, now we can kind of, I'll, I'll tell you about what we can do to make sure we can sustain these plants around us. And also talk about how, what kind of plants you can start with if you're a first time plant parent. I'll talk about that as well. But just to give you an idea as to why I have this around me, the Amazon jungle that Deb pointed out, uh, it's it's about 40% of plants that I have in my place. Uh, this started way before I started the brand. So it was something that came along with me, uh, no matter where I was overseas as well. But not this many plants when I was traveling. When I, As I said earlier, when, uh, when I had smaller spaces or lack of time, I would have plants growing in water. I'll expand a little bit more about it later. But 
you can have plants in various elements uh, in your indoor spaces, but it's all about understanding what kind of plant that you can bring in, right? As I said earlier, shade loving plants are the ones that can sustain indoors. So what are the plants that uh, grow in shade required? They require ambient bright spaces, right? So when you think about this frame that I have in, in what you can see right now, this corner I would say is the brightest comparative to the other spaces. So whenever you bring in a plant, indoor plant into your space, find out which is the most brightest and keep that as a primary space until it adapts into your home. So uh, it can't be immediate. So, you know, uh, we all go through stress, right? So when there is changes, we all deal with stress in many ways. So one of the things that plants do is shed all their leaves. Many plants do that, uh, but also because of excessive watering as well. But before I go into watering, I'll expand a little bit more about lighting. So uh, first thing is make sure that you bring it into a primary space, which is really bright, which kind of mimics what it sat in in the nursery that you bought it from. So then slowly move it into a space that you would actually love having this plant. And that slowly introduces into your space. But also keep in mind, nurseries are open spaces. They might be shaded, but it's open spaces. But we are bringing it into a completely closed space. So the windows may or may not be open, or maybe it's in the air-conditioned space, like in the corporate spaces, right? So uh, air-conditioned fans are actually pretty bad for the plants. So what does it do? It actually dehydrates the air that we also live in. So, uh, so that's actually dries up uh, the plants, uh, the leaves. So if you see the edges of the leaves crumpling and drying up, that's purely because lack of moisture in the air. So what do we need to do to prevent this from happening? If it has to sit in an air conditioned space, make sure you kind of uh, create a humidifier space around it. For example, maybe it can sit in a, a tray of water uh, also misting. So what is misting? It's not pouring of water, but can everybody see that? Fine mist of water. So that in, uh, provides for that moment, not for prolonged times, for about maybe 15, 20 minutes max. Uh, it uh, enables uh, more moisture in the air. So that helps. So in summer, what I normally do or my partner or even at work as well is three to four times in summer, we missed all the plants that we have. So that enables to kind of cool down. So just the thumb rule is if you are feeling warm, if you are feeling cold, that applies to everything around you, including your pets and the plants. Do not forget the plants are living beings. So they feel the change of weather as well. So if it is too warm, it's probably about 30% more warmer to the plants as well. So you make sure that they are quite humidified, they're sprayed on. So that uh, provides them to kind of cool down and relax a bit more and not get stressed out and kind of, you know, fall apart. So that is one trick to keep them healthy. The second trick is watering, right? We, we have a habit of three meals or maybe more meals and treats for the whole day. But plants or other beings don't need feeding so much. So you don't need to water your plants every day. You don't need to water two, three times a day. So uh, the best thumb rule, and I'm referring only about indoor plants, not the outdoor plants. So if you have a plant or many plants, always check if the, dry, uh, the soil is right to touch. So I'm just going to pick this up and point out and see if, if you guys can see it in the camera. Oops. So I'll pick up the soil. Can you see that? So this is a succulent plant, which thrives in dry soil. And that's the condition of the soil it needs to be on a regular basis. So what I mean by that is it does not need to be wet all the time. As opposed to a plant, which is a tropical plant, I would say water it about twice a week in summer and less in, in the non-summer days. So, but also it's not just you go and pour or ask somebody else to pour water for you. So it's just a quick test uh, or once it becomes a habit, you kind of assess and you know it's dry enough. It's been three days since I watered. So it, it's, it's ready for being watered. So that is one thing. So why does the plants die on you? I hear this a lot. Oh, I, I'm not able to sustain plants. They rot away and die and wither away. 
Excuse me. So the common issue with indoor plants, it is root rot. So why does root rot happen? It's because of excessive water. If you're feeding water on a daily basis, or you're feeding water when the soil is really wet, that can lead to a root rot overnight. So if you do not water a plant even for two weeks, the plant will look pale. It's not dead. The minute you give it some water, it comes back to life. But if you're pouring water every day and it's leading to excessive water stagnant in the soil, that can lead to root rot overnight and that can kill the plant the previous day itself. But once the plant has gone into a root rot, there's no coming back. So that's that's the, the fine line between excessive and, uh, and less water. So that is two things that you need to watch out for. Make sure when you bring a plant, provide it the right uh, amount of light and then slowly introduce it to the darker spaces. And also understand there is a lot of uh, uh, promotions or rather posts or blogs rather saying plants for dark spaces or plants for less light. There's no plant as such which thrives without light, right? So it, it still sustains, but it's not going to thrive as much as opposed to sitting in this corner. So in this dark corner, it will still sustain, but it won't be growing as fast as sitting in this corner. So that's the only difference of keeping plants in a bright spot and a dark spot. So for example, snake plant is also considered an oxygen bomb. This is one of the varieties. There's a big guy here in the corner but also I've got a small guy sitting somewhere here. Yeah. So all these snake plants thrive with complete ignorance with water and light. So they're really hardy to kill, but it's easy to kill with watering them on a daily basis. So these are the basic lines that you need to follow if you're bringing in plants into your spaces. If you do have any questions, keep posting. I'm going to move on to the topic of green thumb, right? So uh, I hope it is clarified a little bit already about the whole concept of green thumb, but I will expand on it. So as you can see, it's a really bad PJ. Uh, it's um, Yeah, it's, my thumbs are not green. So this is a common mantra that I use with all my clients and every people that I speak to uh, when they say, oh, I don't have a green thumb and I, I can't look after plants. Like any skill, like any knowledge that you pick up, you learn. This is also a concept on the same lines. It's not something that you're born with. It's something that you understand and, and implement. That's, that's the only difference, like anything. Whether you want to fly a plane, you need to practice, 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 and then only can you be a master at it. So it's the same thing. First of all, get over the fear of uh, killing plants, right? Uh, there is only so much that we as humans can do. We can't, uh, they can't speak to us, so we can't completely understand the conditions. But what I'm saying is, do not ignore what you've learned in killing plants. Understand if you want, document it, write it down in a piece of paper, maybe have a diary, uh, or just note it down in your phone as well. That helps when you bring a new plant again into your space. But in today's life, given that we are in lockdowns, not, I mean, Bangalore is out of lockdown in a semi lockdown space, but online has created so much of knowledge sharing, right? There's so much of information available. So Instagram especially has become uh, what used to be uh, travel crazy and food crazy people about influences and so on posting about this have now switched to plants. Everybody that you see who are influencer or want to be popular or known on Instagram or social media are normally sharing pictures with plants. So, but do understand that's not how the plants look for 365 days. That's just a pick a moment in that 365 days. So do not go as per the pictures that you see online. It's every plant is a living being. If there are moments it's going to look amazing. But there are also going to be moments when it's not going to look amazing. But you need to kind of make sure that it, it gets what is needed at that moment. So, as I said, get over the fear. Uh, start uh, experimenting if you really want to explore the gardening side of you. Uh, there's so many benefits to it. And it does really help in the long run. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's first of all quite physical. There are a lot of theories and science which says when you get your hands into dirt, uh, it, it does help the mind and the soul and the physical body as well. So uh, yes, uh, bring, bring plants into your spaces, live with plants inside the house. If you have a lot of plants outside, experiment with the cutting. 
bring it in and then see how it responds and then maybe start adding more to it as well. So we spoke about uh, the green thumb element. So I'm going to move on to easy tips and tricks in uh, making sure uh, plants stay healthy. But before that, uh, Viren, can we have another poll to kind of get uh, people's uh, responses? Yep, absolutely. Dave, by request you to help me with it. Yes, I'll do it. Just to... Thank you. So I'll post the question to Dave next time. While, while we are waiting for the poll, there is a sure. question that's come up on chat. Uh, Dilip, maybe you can take it up later. I'll, I'll just let you know. You can sure. yourself. How much time does it take for a plant to adapt to closed environment, which is home, if it is bought from an open nursery? This is coming from Masrat. So sure. maybe towards the end, you could you know take this question up. Absolutely, yeah. All right, so going to the poll, having plants in your bedroom is harmful. Wow, uh, yes and no. They maybe another five seconds and we can close the poll. Sure. I'm hoping with the information that I've shared, they're going to answer right. <laughs> Depends on so the I have just ended the is. poll. Okay. Sorry, Viral. The results. So we have a maximum answering. I, I guess it's correct. So 93% says no and 7% says yes. Okay. And we also had Kushal who dropped in a chat message saying yeah. depends on the plant, I guess. Very well. Kushal, I think Dilip will be the right person to help us understand this. Or if you believe. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, uh, there are, again, uh, I wouldn't say to an extent where it harms us. As I said earlier, plants do give out carbon dioxide at night, but not at a level which is going to harm us. So again, for us, uh, for the plant, for uh, for plants to be beneficial for us, it's not okay to just bring in one or two plants and expect that they, they're going to clean the room, clean the air for you in the room. If it is, uh, say, ten by ten uh, size room, and you have maybe about uh, the size five plants, that's not going to solve the problem because we, on a regular basis, are adding so many chemicals that we are not aware of. Uh, be it cleaning agents or be it uh, any kind of room fresheners or including your agabat agabatis or the puja essentials that we use. There's a lot of chemicals being uh, released. Like one of the, re uh, the studies that I read was, you know, the tea light candle uh, gives out about two hours of uh, uh, gases, carbon dioxide included, uh, uh, of a uh, diesel engine uh, or a truck which runs for about two hours. That's the amount of uh, uh, the bad elements being released by a tea light candle. Hopefully I'm not spoiling the whole element for you guys for candlelight dinners. So, but keeping that in mind, we need to understand what is it that we're doing to our close spaces, especially now that we're not able to go out. Please understand what you have in your spaces, including your bedroom. That's where we spend about eight, minimum eight hours in, a, in, in the night sleeping and getting our rest. So what do we need to keep in those spaces to make sure we get the best out of those eight hours when we sleep? So snake plant has been proven to actually help a lot to be kept in bedrooms. So a lot of the bedrooms don't normally have large windows like our living spaces. Hence, these guys work better. So having some plants is still beneficial as opposed to not having any plants at all. So if you're gonna have a snake plant of this size, which is, I'll see if I can pick it up without dropping it. Well, you get the idea. So that's sitting in a eight inch pot. Uh, we would probably need about uh, 15 of those to actually be really effective uh, to work in about uh, six, not even six, 10 by 10 kind of a room. So plants, don't create an environment which is detrimental for us, especially in the bedroom. They do help. Uh, the carbon dioxide they're going to re uh, release is going to be in very small portions and not harmful to us. So that answers the question. Uh, I'm going to answer the question that was posted, uh, asked earlier as well. How long does it take for plants to adapt from the open areas to the closed space? So uh, within a week, uh, for example, uh, you get a flowering plant and, and a lot of clients say, there's a lot of flowers in the nursery, but once I bring it home, there's no flowers or maybe there's one or two. 
Why do you think that happens? Because there's a lot of uh, steroid-like chemicals that's been fed to the flowering plant that you get that many blooms in a plant or they're genetically modified. So uh, in, when we talk about timeframes, we're looking at a week. And in the second week is when we start seeing the changes. By the end of the first week, you'll start noticing some changes. By the second week, you'll see major changes. If it is not working, you know that uh, it's not going to suit the space. So maybe put it out right next to a window, but make sure that if it is summer, don't put it right against the glass because glass heats up and that's going to cook your plant. It's going to burn your plant. So as I said, keep it next to a window and then start moving slowly uh, in about two to three weeks. Once you notice that it's not affected majorly, it's ready to be moved. So the first one week should give you an answer, but if you don't see any changes, it means it's ready to move a little further away from the windows as well. So uh, there are certain, uh, sorry, I'll go back to one more question. It depends on what kind of plant uh, as well, which is kept in the bedroom, right? Uh, there is plants which are called oxygen bombs. There are certain plants which give out oxygen throughout the day and throughout the night, uh, snake plant included, and in, as well as tulsi. So tulsi sadly is not a plant that you can bring inside the house and start growing. So only shade loving plants which are considered as oxygen bombs can be kept inside the house, specifically in your bedrooms and that helps in the long run. So um, let's go on to the tips and tricks about healthy plants. So I spoke about the light and watering earlier. So the crucial thing is make sure you don't overwater it. So uh, the other trick is so you see this yellow leaves. So also another, I think it's one of the questions in the in the um, poll as well, but I'm going to answer it now. So I get a lot of things saying, even if there's one yellowing leaf, uh, customers have said, oh, my plant is dying. No, it's not dying. It's just process of life. It's, it's process of change. That's how it adapts to a place as well. The old dies out and the new generates. So when you have a lot of dry leaves like this, the best thing to do, or when you see yellowing leaf, don't even let it go to the browns and blacks. When you see yellowing leaves, start trimming them. So what happens, the energy that is spent in keeping those dying leaves is then, then spent on the new leaves. So you'll have a lot more new shoots. So that way, any drying leaves or dying dead leaves, remove them from the plant. That also eradicates any fungal growth, any infection that might grow on dead matter. So always when you remove dead leaves, do not put them on the soil around the plant because especially indoor plants, if there is too much of water and there's lack of sun, that encourages fungal growth. And fungus is really bad for your indoor plants. So root rot is one. The second uh, detrimental factor for your plants dying out is fungus. Apart from that, we also have mealybugs. So mealybugs are the white bugs which pretty much uh, infest almost every plant exists that on earth except cactus i guess so and it affects more when plants are not exposed to the natural elements like sun and wind so when we have plants in dough it's easy to get prone with mealybugs so how do you eradicate mealybugs the best way to do is physically remove them so take them into your bathroom if you have a faucet use that pressure of washer i mean the water to spray the bugs away from it then use a mixer like neem oil. So neem oil is, you get them in small bottles. So 5 ml in a liter of water, dilute them, mix them really well. Bathe your plant. So on the body of the plant and in the soil as well. So that helps for about 5 days to 10 days to keep the bugs away. So it's a pattern. It's not a one fix. It's not one uh, medicine that fixes the problem. Mealybugs like cockroaches are uh, immune to a lot of elements, a lot of medicine that's out in the market. So the best thing is remove them by pressure uh, and then give neem oil. That prevents it for a short period. So if you, you'll have to repeat that for about every 15 days or maybe more often if there's a really bad infestation. So that's one way to, uh, to uh, deal with pests. So uh, water, make sure you don't overwater it. Uh, how do you know if it is uh, ready to be watered? So any tropical plant, always touch the soil. The topsoil should be dry, but it should be slightly beyond the topsoil as well. If you stick, stick your finger in to about an inch, 
it should not come back sticky or uh, soil sticking to your fingers. So that means the soil is not ready to receive a lot more water. So that is one trick. Or if you have really large pots, uh, which you know the flow placed about uh, three feet and so on, use a skewer. Maybe use a really long ladle, which is sharp enough to go in. So if it is beyond a feet, if it is still wet, then don't, because these pots will have larger plants. So the roots are usually at the base. So make sure for the larger pots, you actually space it out for about two or three weeks before you water again. So that that keeps your plants really healthy as well. Excuse me. As I said earlier, humidity is something which keeps them smiling and happy and green. So one of the common things that I hear from my clients or guests who come to my place is your plants look really fresh. You know, how do I do that? So we actually missed one is that option, but also we have a lot of water bodies around the house and uh, in the garden as well. So Water bodies, again, there is a lot of myths or uh, misunderstandings. It's easier to maintain. It's not a lot of work. Uh, how do you prevent mosquitoes breeding in them? Uh, if it is a larger piece of water body, you can have fishes, guppies in them. Uh, guppies are the least uh, maintained, uh, which require a lot of maintenance. They don't, they're pretty much maintenance free. So as soon as you bring them, you need to feed them because uh, they feed on uh, the larvae, but also on the algae, which builds up in the pond as well. So they're pretty much self-sustaining. It's a species that government distributed to all the villages when the dengue fever was spreading. So any puddles that was there, they, they were asked to introduce these guppy fishes. So they're quite easy to maintain only if you are comfortable of having those. Or if you're not comfortable having fishes, put some gravel and then add water. So basically water evaporates through the day and that creates humidity, which is good really for your plants. But do not forget, we need to be living in a better humidified space as well. ACs and fans actually dry the air out. And if you notice, I get a lot of migraine. So when I'm uh, under a fan for long periods of time, uh, I'm bound to get a, 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 some sense of pain in my head for the next day or so. So keep that in mind. It does help as, as well, keeping little water bodies. That's the whole idea with Urlis. If you've seen in the olden houses with water bodies uh, decorated with flowers, it had a lot of scientific reason why they used to do that in temples and houses. And that concept is kind of coming back. They used to have the Totti money in the south of India. So you have a large water body in the center or an open space, which used to air out, but also add moisture into the house. So we need to kind of bring those elements into our spaces back. It doesn't have to be a big pond. It could be even a small uh, coffee mug of water between your plants or even where you normally sit as well. That helps hum humidify the space for us and for the plants as well. So both of us benefit. So these are the basic tips and tricks. Uh, always make sure you remove the dead leaves or dying leaves. That helps more shoots. Do not overwater and make sure the lighting is right. Uh, a lot of the artificial light, uh, I'm going to just a little bit backtrack on that. Uh, for example, we do landscaping as well. So a lot of spaces, which is corporate, uh, the plants have done better as opposed to a home setup. The reason being that is the lights are on right from the time the cleaner comes in until the cleaner goes out. Maybe not during the lockdown period, but when the offices were working normally. So that's about 10 to 15 hours of light that mimics the natural light or maybe more. So that helps So the constant artificial light as well helps. So there are certain sensitive plants that you think is not doing well, then place it around a lamp, maybe a table lamp that you have or under a uh, ceiling light as well, which, which you use for long periods. Do not turn anything on specifically for the plant use, keep them around the lights that we use for our daily uh, activities as well. So that helps. So, so if you follow these trips and uh, these steps rather, it's easy to, to make sure they sustain and thrive uh, as opposed to thinking that you do not have a green thumb. So hopefully that uh, has resolved the issue in terms of understanding how to maintain a plant inside. Uh, Dev, could we have another question from the poll? And are we getting more questions from the chat? Hey, sure. uh, Dilip, I think just a quick time check. We are already up on time. Okay. So we have a couple questions that have come in and we can open the forum for more questions as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. We probably will have maybe another five to six minutes before we'll probably have to wrap up. Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, one of the questions that came in, I'm just reading through, the, through this question is, 
Uh, this came in from Isaac. My plants fell sick. Not sure what's wrong with them. Some whitish mold thingy growing on them. What do I do? Yes, that's basically a mealybug. Uh, it it kind of they attach to each other and it looks like a feathery substance, very similar to your mold. Do we wait till the poll is answered? Yeah, I mean we can continue. You can answer the question. Uh, yeah. So mealybug is uh, I'm suspecting it is mealybug with the information that I've received. Uh, as I said earlier, pressure wash as well as make sure you provide it with neem oil that helps to sustain from, keep, I mean, keeping the bugs away from the plant. But do understand they keep coming back. If it is infested really a lot, then it might take about a month before it is bug free. So you need to repeat that process every week if it is about 80% infested. If it is 10 or 15% infested, I would say repeat that cycle in every 15 days. That is enough. Also keep in mind the oil burns the leaf. Excessive oil will burn the leaf. So make sure you dilute it really well in the water and then bathe the whole plant and, and feed the soil as well. So hopefully that answered the question. Sure, so, thank you. That was from Isaac. This one's from uh, Glandina. It's coming in. Which type of pot can be used for indoor plants? Ceramic or plastic? Mm, neither are good. Uh, uh, ceramic is really popular. Plastic is accessible. Uh, pricing wise, it's better. I wouldn't say uh, either is better because the surface inside is pretty similar. But having said that, some of the ceramic pots are not glazed inside. So if it is one of those, then definitely the unglazed inside part is better than the plastic pot. Why is that? Because the pot then absorbs the moisture, holds it for a longer period of time, releases it back to the soil when it is completely dry. And that prevents you having to water it more often. But having said that, the best would actually be terracotta pots. So the clay terracotta pots, they are the best in terms of holding moisture. But the facade uh, gets a deposit of uh, minerals as well. So it does change over a period of time. So it is uh, an aesthetic part, which whether you're okay with or not okay with. So it depends on you. But in terms of plastic, it doesn't help the plant. Uh, it is lighter on your wallet, definitely. Uh, so it's, it lasts longer. Uh, but we need to remember that everything doesn't have to last forever, right? We asses don't last forever. So we, we don't need to invest in things which are there forever, you know? So it's, I would say terracotta clay is best than ceramic ones. And uh, if, uh, if, if, if you have the resources to get those, but again, plastic are not bad. They do the job. So we... So I had launched the question, uh, are our kids tough to grow? Then we had 65% answered yes and 35% no. Wonderful. Uh, yes. So another question so, that's coming in from Komal. I'm sorry, the one sec. Yeah. Uh, bonsais and orchids, good indoor plants. So the, the reason I had to interrupt you because it, it related to the previous question. Absolutely. Can you repeat the question? Sorry, Willem. So Are bonsais and orchids good indoor plants? Absolutely. So uh, I wouldn't say all bonsais are good. Uh, not bonsais in general means uh, muted trees, which actually grow in full sun. But again, having said that, there's a lot of indoor or rather shade loving plants and trees which grow up to 30 feet. They have been nurtured and muted into bonsais as well. Those ones are amazing. Uh, it, I think it brings a totally different aesthetic in terms of the look and what, how you feel about it as well. Uh, that's about bonsais. Orchids, they are amazing indoor plants. Uh, in terms, what I mean by that is when they're in flower, you can basically keep them in any corner of your house. Each flower stick lasts for about a month or more, sometimes even three months as well. So those uh, help in terms of bringing that aesthetic, the, the colorful splashes into your house. But the minute the flowering is over, it's withered away, uh, put it back in full sun. So uh, what happens with orchids is they basically uh, epiphytes. So they grow on trees, attach themselves to tree trunks and they absorb the moisture and the nutrients as well from the trees. And, and it's, it's a very humid environment that they grow in. So as long as you're able to mimic that in your indoor spaces 
when there is no flower make sure it gets a lot of uh, filtered sun on it uh, that enables it to shoot a lot more flowers uh, and that way you can sustain it but sadly what has happened is a lot of orchids are coming out of the labs so a lot of the blooms that you see in the nurseries are uh, simulated artificially simulated so they basically give something called as the npk or dap so these are chemical mixes which enable uh, a lot more flowering as opposed to less so these are something that you need to mix in water it's not harmful for us or pets or they're not harmful for the plants it's just a chemical mix which encourages growth uh, encourages flowering rather so these are something that i've noticed that people actually feed orchid plants on a regular basis 15 days once a month in order to increase the frequency of flowering so that is purely again the condition that they've been modified to grow in that's why they need that support to reflower but having said that it's not a must if you're not comfortable using those chemicals you can just make sure that uh, there's a lot of moisture humidity around it and it's receiving a lot of filtered sun not direct sunlight filtered sunlight and then the magic will happen it will sprout again in a month or two months uh, uh, the flower sticks and then you'll have fresh flowers again so to answer your question yes both are good amazing plants to have indoors um, and going back to the poll do I, do I have time to kind of summarize the poll and yeah we have a couple minutes so yeah, yeah, yeah. we can run the last poll if you say uh, the cha yeah, go for it then i can answer both of them together great okay so the next question is do you have plants at home okay that should be fairly simple Maybe we could probably close this in the next five seconds. Great. Wow. So there is a good 89% which have or who have plants indoor, uh, Dilip. Yeah. And yeah. There are about 11% who do not. Fair enough. Uh, I'm directly speaking, speaking to those 11%. Uh, if it is fear, get over it. It's, it's not something that uh, is difficult. It's not rocket science and you don't need a green thumb for sure. Excuse me. And again, if it is a personal choice, I'm absolutely okay with that. Go to your friends' places who have a lot of plants. When it is safe, not right now. Uh, and, and enjoy those moments. It does make a difference. Or maybe just step outside into a park and enjoy that moment as well. Um, but kind of going up, summarizing the whole element, I personally feel there is a huge change in being able to bring plants into your homes, into your spaces. It does definitely help. Uh, take that step forward and, and do right. Share with us your experiences, how it has helped as well. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, shoot it across. Uh, you can find us on hashtag GreenhouseBLR. But I do hope I've encouraged you guys to get over that fear or that uh, uh, that maybe you needed that push and hopefully I've given that push for you guys uh, to get some plants into your spaces. But guys, thank you for giving me this opportunity. It was uh, it was a fun exercise. I hope it was fun for you guys as well. Uh, Viren, Chandrasekhar and Deb and the whole team, Tanya, thank you guys. Uh, uh, and any feedback, please do share. I would really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, thank you. You have a comment from Masrat coming in saying, loved it. Thank you so much. Sai Kiran says, you're the plant man. Uh, mm -hmm. Atna Bansai says, thank you so much. Uh, Glandina says, amazing session. So thank you. Thank you, Dilip, for taking us through to your uh, experiences and uh, some of the tips and tricks of how we should, you know, adapt to in in-house or indoor plants. Really appreciate this. I'm sure some of us will start adapting to this going forward. But thank you so much for taking time out and giving us this session. Hey, my pleasure. So even if one person brings a plant in, that's that's a huge. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure many people, uh, you know, gave up on bringing plants from nursery after their first or, you know, couple of experiences of uh, plants dying or they're not able to maintain. I think a couple of tips here uh, should encourage um, a lot more yeah. to go back to the nursery again. We as a business, we've seen a boom in people buying plants as opposed to anything else in our store. So I think that itself says it does help. 
So yes, keep at it. Perfect. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Gilly, for your time. Thank you, team, for joining in. Please stay safe, stay home. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye.